All right. Number two, this one up here is a simple simplification problem, but what kind of operation symbol do we have in between here? Yandering? What do we got? Subtraction. Jason answered it for you. What do we got, Yandering? <sighs> yeah, we got subtraction, right? There it is. Now, what do you notice about the denominators? They're not the same. They are not the same. <laughs> so, we have to find a lowest common First of all, before we find the lowest common denominator, what's the good housekeeping thing we do? This is on the Put the parentheses. Put the parentheses in, guys. Go ahead and do that. All right? Now, we can do that here, too. We don't really have to put parentheses around monomials. You could, but you don't really need to. You know what I mean? Because there's no plus or minus. There's nothing confusing about that. Yeah, Julian. So only if it's a binomial, you put parentheses? Pretty much. Binomial, trinomial. Yeah. Okay, so moving right along. Uh, our first, now, this, this, some kids find this a little hard. It's finding the lowest common denominator. How do we find it? Between 3xy squared and x squared y, we need to find an expression that is big enough so that these divide into it evenly. And that expression is going to have to include, okay, something of everything. Okay, it's got to include the number 3. Because it appears there, it's got to be in here. It's got to include what else? X and, y. x and y. But how much of x and y? X do we do x squared and y squared, or do we just do x and y? Yes. 3x cubed and y cubed. 3x cubed and y cubed. Okay, now there's an interesting idea. Now, see, I can see why you would do that. 3x cubed, y cubed. Now, that is a common denominator because 3x three, because three y squared, see, that divides into that evenly. We get x squared, y left over. And this also, okay, we take that 3x cubed, y cubed over x squared y, and that also, right? Look, this also divides into it evenly. We're left with 3xy squared. But this, so, you know, when we say divide evenly, we mean it, it works. It doesn't, you know, doesn't not divide. In the case of exponents, it means we don't have negative exponents, okay? So, in a sense, you're right, but the thing is, and you could actually solve the problem using 3x cubed y cubed, but the problem is it would get a little bigger than it needs to be, and you'd have to do some pretty hefty reducing at the end. Now, is there a lower common denominator? We definitely have a common denominator, but how about a lower common denominator? Yes, Julian. Can we use like 3xy squared? 3xy squared. Hmm. No. It wouldn't work. You know why? Because look what would happen if we use 3xy squared. It would work for this, yeah, it definitely works for that. That equals 1. So that worked out. That's dividing evenly. But 3xy squared um, divided by x squared y <coughs> is going to give you 3 uh, over, it's going to be y over x. And there's your negative exponent. That will work. Okay, you can't have that negative exponent. It's not dividing evenly. You ended up with a fraction. Well, yes, three Lorraine. Three x squared y squared. Yes, it was three x squared y squared. That's the one we want. Because look what happens. Three x squared y squared. Not only does it divide evenly, each of those divides evenly into that, but it's the lowest possible one that can happen. And there, there are tricks to remember that. First of all, there's a three, so you got to have a three. There's x squared, x squared, and y squared. You got to have the, the. You want to have as low as possible of an exponent. But because there's an x squared, you've got to have x squared here. Otherwise, it won't, it won't uh, divide out evenly. So you've got to take as low as you possibly can. But, and you don't have to multiply x times x squared. That's one of the things you don't have to do, because x divides into x squared evenly. So practice, practice, practice with these. It's just practice. You've got to keep doing it. All right? And the YouTube videos will guide you. So now we have our LCD, lowest common denominator. What do we have to do? We have to compensate. How do we compensate? Oh. Julian. We distribute the negative to the 5x and the 3y plus, yes, right? Yes, but not yet. Not yet. Yes, but not yet, because we still have to deal with how much of compensation we have to deal out here. Yes, Lorena. Well, you have to multiply 3x squared y squared to x squared y. Yeah, this, what do we have to multiply by? Oh. See what I mean? Take 3xy squared. It has to equal this. What do we have to multiply by here so that it equals x, x squared? One in the one form of x over x. Important. Even if you don't say one in the form of, you can never just say x because that would be wrong. It's x over x. Now, what do we multiply by here? Over here. 3y? Yes, 3y. 3y over 3y. Right? Which is one disguised as x. <laughs> there you go. Jason, make light of it. Whatever it takes, as long as you understand that that's the main thing.
Okay, so now I want to rewrite this because this gets confusing otherwise. Because one thing that we've got going here is that this has got to be multiplied by that. We've also got a negative to distribute. That's tricky. Let's rewrite it. It demands rewriting. And here it goes. So we've got x. This part's not too bad. 4x plus 2y. That's going to be a straightforward distribution. But this is going to have, this has two elements. It's 5x minus 3y. Now I can actually write this, uh, you can write this as, the 3y can be here, and the 5x minus 3y, okay? In parentheses, and then we'll do the distribution. So notice what we're going to do, this is very, very important. What we're going to do, we're not going to throw that negative in yet. We're not going to distribute it yet. It's going to get too complicated. What we're going to do is take care of this distribution, okay? The 3y, and I'm going to write it on the left. You can do that because the commuted principle allows us. We can take 3y and move it over here. 3y onto 5x and 3y onto negative 3y will get an answer and then we'll distribute the negative across the big brackets. Okay, so let's do it step by step and real nice and easy. x times 4x equals what? 4x squared. x times 2y is 2xy. We say xy because alphabetically x comes before y. Uh, then over here, we've got minus, and we've got the big brackets. 3y times 5x is equal to? 15xy. 3y times negative 3y is? Negative 9y. No, plus 9y. It's, yeah. plus no, no, no. We no. haven't distributed that negative no. yet. See? Oh, okay. See that? That negative is not <coughs> distributed yet. You've got to be very careful with that negative. Leave it off till the end, because otherwise, you're get, you'll get confused, and it will be uh, just a crapshoot to see if you're going to actually be able to get that. It will be very difficult to find. I don't know if you can do it. 3x squared, Thank y you. squared over there. Uh, I'm just going to move this over again. Sebastian, you're saying you're getting this all on camera? Yeah. Okay. Uh, moving right along, our next step is to distribute the negative, right? That's going to change the signs in there. Anybody can see that? Okay. 15xy plus 9y squared. Okay. Now we are going to collect like terms. Are there any like terms? Yes. What? These two, right? xy, yeah. Yeah. So what do we get? 13xy. 4x squared minus 13xy plus 9y squared over 3x squared y squared, okay? So we what is that next to the y right there? It's 9y squared. Oh, that's a 9. Sorry about that. Uh, what can we do? Are we done? Yeah. Well, you'd like to be, but hold on a second. Remember our factoring steps. Is there any way we, you know, you might be able to factor that trinomial on the top no. there? No. I don't know. Why not? Maybe. No. Yeah, Why? Well, know. if we were going it's to be able to... 13 is a prime number. Well, what, what, if we were going to be able to do it, what kind of factor do you think it might be? Trinomial. Maybe swing method. What else? Trinomial. Trinomial square. Is the square root of 4x squared, is that square root of 1? No. Yes. 4x squared, square root. You can take the square root of 4x squared, right? What's equals what? 2x. 2x. You can take the square root of 9y squared, what do you get? 3y. Okay, and now, the question is, when we multiply those times 2, what do we get? 12. Okay. Right, 12xy. Is that the middle term? No. Uh-oh, that's not a trinomial square. Okay, but at least we know what to look for, guys, and we at least tested it out relatively quickly. Does not equal the 12. Does not equal 12, 12xy uh, 12 does not equal, does not equal middle term. Okay? Okay, so it does equal 12xy, but it doesn't equal the middle term. Okay, so everybody clear on that? Now, what about swing method? This is a good review of factoring. 4x squared minus 13xy plus 9y squared. Go ahead and click. Good. Now, uh, Right here, we tried to see if we could factor this by different, I mean, uh, by trinomial squares, and it didn't work because the middle term is not equal to the two times the square root of the outer terms. It doesn't work. So we went ahead and used the swing method. We swung four times nine, and got 36, and we factored out from x squared minus 13xy plus 36. We were able to factor it out to x minus nine, x minus four, which then when we unswung the four, we got. 4x minus 9 and x minus y. So we did factor that out, but that didn't make it any more simple. We aren't able to cancel anything. There's nothing that simplifies. So this is the final answer. It's a simplified form. It's factored on the top, and it's the lowest possible denominator.